it's kind of funny. We had that great reading on purpose, and we have a song on vision, and we're talking about mission. It's like a nightmare. <laughs> I remember one time I was looking at, like, what do we want to, we want to create some sort of statement for our community, and so we were deciding, do we want to create a vision statement, or a purpose statement, or a mission statement? So I went on the minister's listserv, and I said, okay, tell me the difference between the, what each of these are. Well, every most ministers have a business background, and so they all were giving their definitions from their businesses, and they were all different. It was completely unhelpful <laughs> because they, they were like, I'm like, well, they mixed, you know, they interchanged it. The ones, so I'm going to just give my general sense so we're all on the same page. The way I understand a vision is it just is. It's not something you do. It's not something you make happen. You don't have to pray it into being. It already is in existence. And so one of the things that's been, being, been shown to me a little bit over time is that, and this is true for everyone, is that we have always have been living our vision. We were born as a vision, and it's from the eternal, and we, were, we have always been living that vision. That vision has been the source and sustenance of our life, and will be that until we move on to the next stage of existence. So the vision comes from this eternal isness of being. The purpose is deeply connected to that vision of the purpose of the vision, for us, so as you catch your own vision, the purpose of that vision. The way I see mission is it's a very focused intent, it's present tense, it's in time and space, and how it's how we express it, how we carry it out into the world. There's a forward motion to it. And so before we get into that forward motion, because it's the last Sunday of the year, I just want us to take, do a little bit of what we do in the burning bowl, but with a slightly different bent. Take a moment to just embrace this past year. So we can start with where we've been before we move on to the future. So our theme this past year has been, who can tell me, <laughs> who knows what last year's theme was? To, the theme for 2023. This is a test. <laughs> who knows the theme for 2023? What? I said, I'll tell you, yeah. Anyone, can anyone say what it is? Great love story, yes, that's a part of it. It was a really long one. The greatest love So it's your spiritual journey. You forgot the your spiritual journey part. The greatest love story ever told. Okay, so clearly that had a huge impact on you. <laughs> next year's theme two words <laughs> so I'm just curious did anyone even if you may not have been totally tuned into the theme have any insights about your spiritual journey the greatest love story ever told for instance let me get when Jack came up and shared his journey he, I don't think he was consciously saying oh this is my spiritual journey the greatest love story ever told but it was an expression of that like it just emerged because we've been in, even without knowing it, we've been in that energy. So it, it, you may not have consciously, clearly not consciously, intended about the theme, but is there anything that in this past year, any insights or revelations that anyone's had that you would be willing to share about your spiritual journey, the greatest love story ever told? I expected that. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's way too long. And it's, and it's your greatest, your spiritual journey spans a lot of time. And there's, there's a lot of things that have happened. But I hope you take time to really honor your journey. Yes, come on up, Laura. But I'll come down, I'll come down. Okay. I'll hold the mic. So last year, in the beginning of the year, I actually, for the first time, kind of made a whole revelation of, you know, because my kids were being jerks, which older kids can be. And I was just, I kind of went into the new year, into 2023, saying, you know, live your truth, you know, set your boundaries, 
and to have the self-respect for me. And I was a single at the time, and I kind of went, okay. So I, I, had, I had actually said, okay, I'm ready to kind of have a partner because I'd been single for seven years. I own my own business. I'm like, I don't even know where the room is. And I had a girlfriend that was like, you're too young to be single. <laughs> so, but I just set my intentions and then this year has been like a, an amazing year because I kind of lived through the truth, lived through the boundaries. I found a partner. It was just amazing. And it was just that I woke up in the morning went and went, this is what I want to do. And, you know, to not to trust that gut instinct to think, you know, if, if something's going on in there, then it's not right. So even when I went looking for a partner, I was like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Seriously, seriously. And the one I found I was, was was like he didn't want a relationship. I was ready for a relationship. I was, you know, so it and it all just kind of went and it was like a little puzzle piece. So live your truth. Oh, yeah. Listen to your instincts. Set your boundaries because you deserve it. Love that. Thank you, Laura. Yes, yes. See, this is when it gets fun. Well, I, I just want to say that one of the things that moved me forward on my spiritual journey this year was the covenant group that we had. It was such a beautiful time and beautiful conversations, and it really honored who I am and um, helped me really focus on what my spirituality is. And I, it was just a lovely group with Rashmi and Maria and Chit and... Joni. 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 Yeah, it was really a lovely. Lynn. That's for Lynn. Thank you, sir. And it, it was, um, I just encourage everybody, next time Harriet offers it to take it, it's really good. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely. Thank you. This is, thank you, Gloria. Love it when we learn. So, uh, thinking of the greatest love story ever told, um, and what I realize is um, that I have cultivated more self-love and self-compassion than I've ever had in my entire life. That's beautiful. Love it. Lynn. So Cindy, who's online, says that becoming part of the prayer team so she can become a conduit of love and light. Love and light. It's been an impact. Uh, Kathy Sharma says attending yoga nandas, yoga nandas book group so they can live the potential of living a life dedicated to Kathy Sharma said attending the book group so she can become a conduit for spirit living a life dedicated to spirit. Spiritual journeys. Anyone else? It's important. You know, one of the things we do at the burning bowl is, is we let go what we want to release that no longer serves us. But it's also really important to take these moments to acknowledge the things that have impacted us in a beneficial way. Because when we are going into 2024, we're not going in blank slates. We're going in with a lot of good stuff that we want to acknowledge and be grateful for. So thank you. And, and I hope you, if you have a little bit of time today, to reflect on that. One of the interesting inspirations um, that I have is the Jewish tradition. I went to a Jewish Montessori for three years for uh, when I was a child learned Hebrew, we had Shabbat on Friday, celebrated the holidays. And I'm, I, so I'm always was sort of attuned or listening, I guess, more carefully when I would learn about Judaism in various classes. And I remember um, one of the things that I had with, from my friends who were Jewish is this very strong sense of roots. And it wasn't about religion as much as culture. Well, religion too for some, but definitely culture. And that played a, a big role in how they, were, they would experience the world in the present day. And I never understood it because I didn't feel, I didn't, I don't know, I just, like, that was honoring and, and making sure they had friends that, had, that were similar to them becoming, because I was Christian, I was sort of part of the more mainstream, so I didn't, never thought about it. 
And then I remember one summer, it was the summer before my junior year, when my family was at Virginia Beach on vacation, and I was going to an, a program at Andover Summer School. And uh, my, so my dad and I got in the car and we drove, we, we were in no hurry, took our time driving up the East Coast. And in that time, he started telling me all these family history stories that I didn't know. <clears throat> I can also say I've probably forgotten 80% of the stories he told me, but it was really cool at the time because I hadn't heard them. And there were things, there were cool things, like Julian's middle name, Jackson, is named after Amos Jackson, who was a lieutenant with an all-black regiment, and he's even on a statue in DC. And then he became mayor of Fall River. Just, and then there's another guy who's in our family history who may or may not have murdered someone. You know, it's a little iffy there. <laughs> you get these stories, right? And so I'm listening to all these stories of my family history and I get to Andover, and I, there's just these moments, we all have them. I, I remember exactly where I was looking. I was looking at this building as we were driving in, and I felt such confidence. The reason why my dad wanted me to go to that program is because I was so shy. He wasn't sure I was going to be able to do college. I was going to be able to leave home. So he wanted it as a test run away from home. And instead, I felt this incredible anchor. And it was not confidence from anything that I did, but from belonging, from that rootedness. I'm like, ah. Oh. I belong, and from hearing those stories, I had one of the best summers of my life. Be and it was a creative writing, so I was doing a lot of creative work, but I felt anchored. And you, and it doesn't, so it takes intention. I, Jack and I were talking about it, and he was saying he does that musically. He loves roots music. He loves exploring. So when we explore the past, I was exploring orthodoxy for a year. Just It wasn't about becoming orthodox, it's just roots. That when we connect with roots that mean something to us, that actually helps us in moving forward. So I had a prof uh, one of the, my professors in ministerial school, he was not a CSL, um, he's part of the Jesus seminars, <clears throat> a really powerful teacher. And I remember, I, I remember it so clearly, he just, because he said it so many times in his lecture, he said, the Jewish people are not about living in the past. They honor their roots, but everything that they were doing, it was always about pushing forward. There was always this forward motion, how to move along. And it's interesting, because I've been thinking about this word mission, and as I'm, the, the whole mission impossible, because I was just feeling, I'm feeling enthusiastic for next year and the, the energy of it, but it didn't, I didn't make the connection until my sister-in-law, my oldest brother, Dan's wife, her father was a Christian missionary in Japan. So she is half Japanese, her mother's Japanese. And um, so she just happened to send me a paper that he wrote on Zen and Christianity. And it was almost all about Zen. It, didn't, it was Paul Tillich, who's a pretty liberal Christian, but he didn't say much about him. But what was interesting, I was like, oh, mission. Then I started thinking about the negative impact of mission. Or like, I'm trying to change someone because they're, they're wrong. You know, and I'm like, oh, that's a negative. I, wasn't, I didn't have any negative impact when I came up, but then I thought, oh, there's an interesting take there. Mission. And so we have this tradition in, in the tradi Christian tradition of being missionaries, going out and trying to convert people. So there's a little tenuous, that, but, but, so there's a negative connotation, but there's still the energy of making change. So I didn't grow up in a teaching that was about changing anybody, or about converting in Christianity, but there's definitely make change, go out, build homes for the, I mean, the teen group, you go out and you do service work, you're going, always going out to serve, to make the world a better place. And that certainly is part of the Jewish tradition. And then we have the Islamic tradition, which is also very heavy on charity, of going out and making a difference in community. We have the Muslim Community Center in Pleasanton. They do so much for this Tri-Valley area. In fact, we got our vaccination shots there. They were just so generous in giving and giving. So there's this really strong, energy, I would say, in the Western Judeo-Christian Islamic tradition of mission. Because I was thinking about Hinduism and Buddhism, and I don't feel as much that energy of going out into the world. It's very much going in. You're going in to meditate. You're going in to awaken spiritually. You're going in a lot. But there's not as much emphasis on the outer. So I don't, I, I heard one organizational psychologist 
talk, refer to the Chinese culture as being very past oriented. I can't speak to the Asian cultures, I'm not going to speak to them, but I do know growing up in a Western culture, there's a strong energy of moving forward. So we want to establish ourselves in the past, that foundation, and also in the energy of moving forward. How do we want to move forward? That's our mission. We can move forward, we can do a lot of things, mission, mission oriented is doing things, but it, we want it to be focused. So one of the questions, or the questions we want to ask ourselves is, for whom are we moving forward? For ourselves, for other people? Why are we moving forward? What's our intent? Does it, where do we want to move forward? Where are the areas? We can't do everything all the time for everyone, where? And obviously, what is our mission? And then, when? When is an interesting one. We'll get back to that. But what they find is that, what they have found is that the greater the challenges that we put for ourselves, the happier we are. The more sense of progress that we think that we're making, not think, we tend to make, we feel more joy. So joy is very deeply connected to a sense of progress, and progress is usually facing challenges that we're happier when we're, we get bored or stagnating if we're just doing whatever we want. So, so much of our egoic mind is like, how can I feel more comfortable? What can I do to be more at peace, to be more comforted in my home? But in fact, what brings us true joy is to go uh, against our comfort, to, be, to embrace discomfort, to embrace something new. So I'm giving you all this as, you're, as, you're, as we're thinking about our mission possible for 2024. Pushing your boundaries of what's familiar. Pushing your boundaries of what makes you comfortable. Because in fact, it's that very pushing that's gonna bring you the deepest sense of happiness and fulfillment is to go past what you've done before. I listened to a little short, you know, on, on in, in Instagram they have these little short film thingies. And so someone was, uh, I was listening to Matt Damon talk about a conversation he had with Tom Cruise. So Tom Cruise has done all these Mission Impossible movies, and he's really big on doing all the stunts. <laughs> and so um, Matt was say, asking him about it, and, and then Tom Cruise is telling him about one of the things, and what do you call them? I don't know. Stunts, I guess for Mission Impossible, and he said, yeah, and it gets really intense, yeah, and I was, and he goes, I spent 15 years planning this out, 15 years, by the way, 15 years planning it out, 15 years, I'm planning it out, and I'm, so I'm explaining it all to the, to the safety guy of how we're gonna do it, and the safety guy goes, you can't do that, it's too dangerous, and Matt Damon's like, so yeah, yeah, what did you do? And he goes, I got another safety guy. <laughs> And that's what he's known for, is always pushing what people think is possible. Henry Cavill played, um, I think is that his name, he played Superman, and he said, that was nothing compared to doing a movie with Tom Cruise. He pushed me past limits that I didn't know I could do. It takes someone who says, you can do this. These 100 mile races, I didn't know anyone ran 100 miles until I started following Jesse Isler, and it's just when people see other people doing it, then suddenly all these people are running, I thought 26, the marathon was huge, and now 100 mile, 100 mile races are becoming the thing. That seemed improp, impossible. In, it, it was impossible that became possible. And there's a joy. You, you can't talk to a single person who, even if they don't do it, that they've tried doing it, the sense of accomplishment and joy that comes from pushing those boundaries that you never thought you could do that you never thought was possible. So there are your own personal boundaries, boundaries in the world, things that we think might be impossible. Aren't the people that we find the most interesting are the people who've pushed past boundaries of things that we thought were possible, impossible. Turns out they were possible. And anyone can do it. But it takes some ingen ingenuity the willingness to try it. So that gets to the when, because I think this is kind of an interesting paradox. The when is, when am I going to do this? So I'm 58, five years, I'm gonna be 63. 
Am I going to wait until I'm 63 or just sort of keep putting it off? Or am I going to have this energy, this urgency of, no, it's now. It's like 2024 is here. Those things that I think I might do someday, it's now. It's 2024. No more waiting. No more just like, oh, I can do this or that. No, it's now. So there's an urgency to, to our growth. There's an urgency to missions. People who went on missions, the good and the bad, but they, there's a sense of it's now. It's not like well, eventually I'm going to do this because I'm just being in the presence of the cosmic oceanic presence of love and freedom and peace, and so I'll just let it flow, whatever. No, there's a drive. There's a focus. There's a drive of, okay, all of that is true, and that is what's animating and pushing me forward in this next stage of my life. But if it's not paradoxical, it's not true, as Shinra Suzuki said. And so one of the things that Adam Grant, who is a fascinating guy, probably will be referring to him a lot next year. Uh, he's an organizational psychologist. And one of the things he became interested in this was several years ago was what he calls originals, people who are original. And what he found was, their research found, was that people who are original tend to be procrastinators. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was a, he called himself a precrastinator, which is, he said, if something was due, I'd have it done two months earlier. But it turns out that people who do things right away are not as creative as the procrastinators because the procrastinators are allowing a lot of different ideas to float around. And he learned it because there was people who, who wanted him to invest in a company, and they were always late. They ne he said, you know, it's your website, your whole business is on a website, and, and it's a week before launch, and you haven't even created anything. <laughs> he said, no, I'm not going to invest in you. And they went on to make billions of dollars, and that's what got them interested in originals, because they don't necessarily follow the guidelines. They're not necessarily on top of things, because there's a lot going on inside this head of theirs, and they're, they're allowing, and, and he just gave a lot of examples of just having space to say, okay, here's my idea, here's how I'm going forward. Oh, but that's also a good idea. And, and just having the space to allow new things to come through and not be so rigid of, oh, here's my plan, I'm gonna do my plan, I'm gonna go. That actually doesn't allow for a lot of creativity. So for those of you who do not have your 2024 intentions yet, <laughs> this is good news. <laughs> yes. Mission possible. Do you know what your mission possible is and do you have to have it done by tomorrow? We have the knowing that it's now, 2024, we are going to be collectively and individually looking at our mission. What is our mission? But that doesn't mean by end of January you have to know that you know that you know what your mission is and you're just going to be so clear. There's time and space to explore. We need that time and space to explore in the first part of the year so we can allow different ideas to come in. So we're, we're allow that creativity and the originality to pour through us and we're not just so schedule oriented. So we want to have schedules because that creates context, that creates structure, that creates the forward motion. I'm definitely moving forward. So the guys who, the, this company that he was talking about that became a billion dollar business, but they were always late. It wasn't that they weren't moving forward. They were very clear about where they wanted to go, but they wanted to do it in a, in a way that was original and that answered some of the problems in other previous things. So th they took their, they, it took time and at the same time there was a drive. Like it's that paradox. It's a drive. We want to have a mission for 2024. If, we're, if we get to June or July and we're still not clear what our mission is, then, then, it become, then it becomes almost meaningless. We need to get clear what our mission is. There has to be a drive to know what it is in order to implement it. And we also want to have space to reflect and to allow for the different possibilities because we're feeling the energy of the deadline. So we have our own internal deadlines. And he uses Martin Luther King and Actually, Jack could probably share the story much more clearly than I can. But, you know, the, uh, he, he was up until 3 a.m., Martin Luther King, before his, the March of Washington speech, writing out his speech. And then beforehand, he, so he gets up on stage, and uh, 
there was another piece of that that I don't remember it, but then um, he's about 11 minutes into his speech and he just lets the whole thing go. You said someone... <laughs> so Maelia Jackson yells to him, tell him about your dream, Martin, tell him about your dream, and so that I have a dream. That was a spontaneous moment, and then where he went from there all came from this inner place that wasn't planned. He spent so much time on the planning, and then he was allowed, he could let it go and let the power of spirit move through him. So we want the context. So I'm, I might create my mission for 2024, but not hold on to it tightly. For, and, and, I, and we'll just have our own little time periods so that I'm looking at like the first part of the year is really looking at our own individual mission statements. So between January and March, we're gonna be talking every, every week about mission, living, finding our mission and living our mission. And it's all gonna be aimed individually. And then in April, we're going to start talking collectively. Okay, we've, we've really gotten clear and can hone what our mission is to be here. How does this relate to everyone else's mission in our community? How does this relate to a collective vision for the Lighthouse Center for Spiritual Living? I love this community. But we, we just had our nine-year anniversary. And for those of you who know, nine is the number of completion. It is time for new life. It is time for this energy of new life, of moving forward, not just staying what was, just not keep talking about this is what was in the past, or this is how we did it in the past, but to say, okay, that's good, thank you for that, and based on that, let's move forward. Let's move forward with energy, with vision, with purpose, and with a sense of mission to make ourselves and each other better than where we were at the beginning of 2024. Does that sound about right? <laughs> so the invitation, obviously, in this day of transition from that which us, anchor ourselves and be grateful for our past, for our journey, recognizing always that those being mom turning moments in our, turning points in our life were not accidents, as Laura was saying, that intention, but there's something moving and has been moving through our lives, through our whole life. So connecting with that. In fact, I just read this little paragraph of John Hefferlin of the Hefferlin Foundation. He was good friends with Ernest Holmes. And in fact, Ernest Holmes considered him a minister of CSL. He never officially became a minister, but he was, he was giving a talk before Holmes at an at a event. <sighs> And one of the things he said, we can have everything else, but if we don't have a spiritual connection, none of it else, none, nothing else matters. That you can have all the treatments, he used that word treatments, you can have all the imagination, you can have all of this stuff, but if you don't have a spiritual connection, it has no power and it has no grace. That's what's important about looking at our foundation. Spirit has always been with us to know that, to know that to know that even when you didn't think spirit was there, spirit was there. You've never been outside of that realm of spirit your entire life because it's that very knowing that is the, your solid ground as we're moving forward into the unknown, as we're facing things that we think are impossible, as we're facing things that we think maybe aren't, maybe not, might even be true for us. This guy Adam Grant who wrote this book called Hidden Potential, which I got for Julian like two weeks ago, I never heard of him until like two weeks ago, and now I'm really, and I got it for Julian's sake, but now I'm like, oh, Julian, what'd you read about today? What'd you read about today? <laughs> Hidden Potential, great book, Adam Grant, what caught my attention, Selena Williams, Serena Williams said that she wishes she had it at the beginning of her career, it would have made her career better. I'm thinking, man, you had a pretty good career. <laughs> so she must think pretty highly of him, Yo-Yo Ma. I mean, he's recommended by a lot of people. He's, the, he's an organizational psychologist with the Wharton School at University of Pennsylvania. The book is called Hidden Potential. We will be referring to that this, this year because when he said what drove him to write the book is he said, I saw so much potential in people that they were not realizing. We have so many gifts and we're not realizing them. And so we need to start drawing it out in each other. So that's what we're here to do. We're here to do it for ourselves and to support one another. So my, my invitation is to 
Be thankful for where you have been, knowing that it's always been anchored in spirit, and that spirit's going to take care of you. But think of challenges, something that you want to push that you might think is slightly impossible. Slight that might push, and that could be an individual desire. It could be a desire to make a difference in the community. It, there's no limit, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, soulfully, collectively, community-wise, anyways, pushing your boundaries. Don't repeat 2023. <laughs> I forgot where I was. Five years from now, we don't want to be who we are today. I would consider myself a failure if I'm doing the exact same thing five years from now that I'm doing today. My goal is not to just keep repeating myself over and over so I feel comfortable, but to push, to push. That feeling of pushing is one of the greatest feelings ever to explore into new territories. So invite yourself. I guess, you know, I, I almost, this is a little sad. It seems sad, but it also is a blessing. I have my 40th high school reunion in, in the summer. There was a guy that I've known since elementary school. And I have funny little, uh, just a nice guy, funny little memories. There was one time in high school, I wanted to learn how to wink. So I was sitting in class going like this, trying to figure out how to close one eye and keep one open. And he was sitting across from me, and so he starts winking back at me. <laughs> <laughs> just someone I've known forever. I couldn't wait to see him at, at our uh, high school anniversary. Just yesterday, I, get, uh, I saw on Facebook that he transitioned to the other side. Short, quick cancer, it moved through him really fast, and he's gone. I'm not going to get to see him at my high school reunion. It's not bad. He's going to continue to grow. I refuse to use the word dead. He's not dead. He's moving on. He's continuing of life. It's just sad because I don't get to see him. But it reminds me there is an urgency to our life. There is an urgency to live as fully and richly and beautifully as possible in every moment and not to wait Tomorrow, we start the new year. Let's not wait. Let's embrace it with the fullness of the possibility for our lives. Let's dream. Let's dream. Let's think big. Let's live our purpose. And let it call us into a brand new year. Let's pray. Thank you, thank you, thank you, beloved loving presence infinite love intelligence of this universe that has been all of our lives, all of our lives. It has been all of our lives, all of our lives. It has been all of our lives, all of our lives. We have never been outside of this love intelligence. We have never been outside of this vision for our life. It has carried us. It has guided us. Even when we didn't know we were guided, it has changed our course when we didn't, when it seemed, came out of the blue. This presence has been the gift that keeps on giving and will continue to give until the day we transition to our next yet greater yet to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the times we've spent in prayer. Thank you for all of the times that we have spent in meditation. Thank you for all the times we've spent in community, remembering to remember, to remember, to remember who and what we really are. We are so grateful for all of the spiritual gifts and growth and support and love that we have given ourselves to throughout our life and especially in this past year of 2023. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And as we breathe in in gratitude, the divine presence, this infinite love intelligence that has always been our life, we open our heart and our mind to allow that new, unimaginable almost, ideas to take hold in our heart, in our body, in our mind, in our soul that is pulling us, pulling us with great joy into this new 2024 to live a mission beyond what we ever possibly thought we could imagine. And yet, and yet we deep down that deep sea that knows that we know that we know that it is possible. That if it is a desire in our heart, it is possible. If it is something that we have felt a longing for, a desire for, it is possible. And so we open our heart to those realms of poss what we have deemed impossible into the possible. We live our mission. We move forward with direction, with focus, and with utter and complete joy that we are living the mystery of the universe day by day in time and in space. 
And so for the infinite good of God that is even now healing us and revealing as us this new life, we hold and know this for all those people whom we love and care about. We hold this for all beings who we've never even met, who are going through different life stories that are almost unimaginable to us. We, we hold all of that. We hold the entire cosmos that in our mission and purpose and vision of life, it includes the entire cosmos, even as the entire cosmos includes us in its infinite and eternal vision, mission, and purpose. And so for the vastness and the joy and the freedom and the love and the beauty and the harmony and the creativity and the abundance that is pouring through all of us in this moment, thank you, thank you, thank you. In deep and abiding love, we just joyfully, joyfully, peacefully, delightedly, let it be, we give it over to the infinite energy and power of pure spirit, knowing it has it, and we let it go. We are free, as we say together now, and so it is. Amen. I walk in God in all I do. I walk in God in